Joy 99.7 FM. This is Top Story. Tonight. Can you explain what you meant by this IGP is not correct? Madam Chair, I will not deny that fact today, tomorrow, or the next day. I will make that statement again that the current Inspector General of Police is not managing the police service well. I will say it everywhere, anywhere that I go. And you can do your own investigations, call police officers on the ground, and find out from them. Key police chief heard in leaked audio plotting to remove the IGP refuses to go down without a fight as he takes on his boss, Dr. George Akufu-Dampari, for what he says is his mismanagement of the Ghana Police Service. Are you a politician? Yes, of course, I am. There's nobody here who is not a politician. As a serving police officer? I am on leave pending retirement. Is there bad blood between yourself and the IGP? The chairman, as I sit here, I don't have any bad blood. I speak my mind, whether you like it or not. You can decide to hate me for that. That is your matter. COP George Mensah insists Bugri Nabu only spewed lies when he appeared before the committee. The chairman, Chief Bugri Nabu came to this committee, told a lot of lies, including lying that he spoke to a certain superintendent whom he has never spoken to. We have details of the committee's hearing as they consider offering him an in-camera hearing for more revelations. You want to stay on Top Story for details. Top story, as always, is brought to you by Vodafone. Now, this evening, a commissioner of police, Alexander Mensa, who is at the center of the alleged plot to remove IGP, Dr. George Akufo-Dampare, has confirmed his voice in the league tape. According to him, he has met prime witness in the case, Chief Daniel Bugrinabu, for four times to discuss several private conversations which he would not divulge publicly. COP Alexander Mensa has also taken on the IGP, Dr. George Akufo-Dampare, for mismanaging the Ghana police. Police service. He says most officers are currently disgruntled and charged the ad hoc committee to do further investigations on this matter. He has however indicated to the Parliament's committee probing the case that portions of the tape has been doctored. I can't accept everything in the conversation. See, in true candor and counsel, I want you to I will pay attention to this. See, when you say that a voice represents your voice, what do you mean? Is it your voice or is it not your voice? The flow of the conversation is that Chief Bugri Nabu speaks and you also speak. And there's a flow like that. Do you deny this flow of the conversation? Chama. I will not deny the flow that when he speaks, I also speak. I will not deny the flow. You see, would you also admit that nobody in this flow is attempting to improvise your voice? Mr. Chairman, I said it here and I'm going to repeat it. I said this tape is an edited version. I agree. Fine. That is your position, that this is not a full I mean, uh, tape. It's a tape which has been edited by your perspective. Nevertheless, in the unedited flow of conversation, is your voice improvised? Is this somebody trying to fake your voice? Ramoche, what I want to say is that because the audio, which I've just listened, is an edited one. There's a likelihood that somebody can fake my voice. But I can't confirm because I have not, I don't have that technical system to confirm it. Is there any flow of conversation on this tape that you, in true humility, will say that nobody is faking my voice. 
or it is the entire tape that you want to say that somebody's trying to, I mean, fake your voice. The chapter, not the entire. Commissioner, which part of the audio do you admit is not faked? Honorable Chairman, this is a very broad question that I will not be able to answer. If he has any specific question on the specific side of the audio, please, I'm ready to answer. I'll come to that. But before I even get there, let's establish certain truths about why your work, your commissioner of police, what is your designation in terms of responsibility? Mr. Chairman, for now, I am on terminal leave pending retirement. I don't have any designation. Prior to that, what was your designation by way of responsibility? I was the Director General in charge technical. COP Mesa, Chief Bugrinam appeared before this committee in person and made statements, emphatic statements about you. I'm talking about the statements he made before this committee, not those on the audio. Honorable Agaga posed this question to him. Chief, I want to get something clear. This audio that was played a while ago, a while ago, who was the one on the audio who spoke to you throughout, aside the phone calls you received? Was it Commissioner Mensah? or Asari. And Chief Nobu answered, Commissioner Mensa and then Commander Asari. They were doing most of the talking. This is what Chief Nobu said before this committee. And then listen to this as well. He says, I decided that I need to get the information properly and the proper way was to look for a tape, to tape all that we had been discussing so that I will know where to send it. So that when I send it to the president or anybody, they cannot deny or neither will somebody think that I am concocting stories. We chiefs do not like to lie. If I tell a lie, I will die. The truth of the story is that the tape is correct. The voices on it. I was there and they came to me. What do you say to this? Honorable Chair, that is the statement from Bugrinam. And that is his statement. In that statement, he also mentioned that somebody called Superintendent JB called him and he said he was going to meet him at if you go to go and see the president, we are here and subject JB denying that he never spoke to Bukinabu. Bukinabu came here to lie. Uh, Commissioner, uh, your junior colleague is in uniform, uh, Superintendent Sari. Why are you not uniformed? What is the reason? Because you are a serving officer. Bravo. Uh, my, my former deputy minister. As I said, I am leave pending retirement. I've been on leave for three and a half months. As I speak, I don't do any police work. I don't wear police uniform. I don't go to police office. I'm in my house. So you've surrendered your accoutrement to the state. Is that what you're saying? I am supposed to surrender it on the 16th of September. Very well. Now, let me take you back to the substantive issue. Captured in the audio, these are some of your own statements. Now, you said, because I wouldn't want doctor to become the flag bearer, and then we lose the elections. Then it goes on, gave you the position, break the eight. Meanwhile, this IGP is not correct. Alaji, 
you dear, you have done politics. You know elections is not just, sometimes elections, <coughs> mafia work, is inside of oh, Alaji. Hmm. No, no, not at some time. Oh. As for that one. Then you said, I am just saying. Then Alaji comes in. Mafia work is inside, not on some time. It is not some time, it is. Then you said, yes. And this man sitting up there will not help our party to do anything. This is captured in the audio. Do you agree to the fact that these statements attributed to you are captured in the audio which was played to your hearing, Commissioner? Yes, I made it. I made it? Yes. Yes. Now, Commissioner, I want you to be candid with this committee. Like I said, we are not prosecuting you. So when you give indication in the audio that as for elections, it is about mafia work. Can you tell us what you meant by that? Honorable, I never said election is about mafia work. I said in elections, there is always some mafia work. I right. never said election is mafia work. Okay. And what do I mean by that? During elections, if you don't provide the needed security for people to come out and vote peacefully, and you allow people to come and disturb, to come and snack box at your strongholds, then you are ending in opposition. That is what I meant. Very well, Commissioner. Now, in that same statement, you indicated that meanwhile, this IGP is not correct. Uh, Commissioner, can you explain what you meant by this IGP is not correct? What has he done? I will check. I will not deny that fact today, tomorrow, or the next day. I will make that statement again. That the current Inspector General of Police is not managing the police service well. It's something I will not run away from. I will say it everywhere, anywhere that I go. And you can do your own investigations, call police officers underground, and find out from them. Within the context of your statement, it had to do with elections. So let's do some quick analysis of his conduct relative to elections. Has he evinced some level of unprofessionalism when it comes to the policing of elections to the best of your knowledge? Because you spoke within the context of the conduct of elections. My concern was and is that as we speak, majority of police officers are not happy. And if these same people are those who are going to police the elections, and remember, police officers, they vote, their wives vote, their children vote, their mothers and fathers vote. That is my concern. And so you were unhappy that with the posture of this IGP, your party will lose elections. Is that correct? Is that the statement made? Yes. Our party, is, 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 is that correct? We lose elections, we are unhappy because IGP's posturing uh, wouldn't inure to the benefit of your party because it's quote and unquote just and fair. Mr. Chairman, oh, no, Mr. Chairman, at that time we were talking about politics. And I was talking to a political figure. Are you a politician? Yes, of course, I am. 
There's no body here who is not a politician. As a serving police officer? I am on leave pending retirement. Is there bad blood between yourself and the IGP, your, your current boss? The chairman, as I sit here, I don't have any bad blood. But what I do is I speak my mind, whether you like it or not. If you're my boss and you do what I don't like, I'll tell you. You can decide to hate me for that. That is your matter. But I don't have any bad blood. So, so your answer is that there, there are several professional disagreements. That's what we're saying. There are never personal issues, but okay. professional disagreements. That's correct. Okay. So, Chairman, let me dwell on the, go to the last um, point. That you are in the reckoning to be IGP, and that a report was purported to have been sent to the president, which included your name, from the conversation and that the secretary to the president, Nana Bidu Asante, did not provide that information to the president. Was that a subject matter of discussion between your good self and Chief Kubri Nam? Mr. Chairman, that is one of the portions of the audio that I don't trust. Because I know we discussed about the report by bringing the name of Nana Bidia Jo in, I still cannot remember. You heard there the interaction between COP Alex Mensa and the ad hoc committee put together to probe that leaked audio purporting to remove current IGP Dr. George Ekufu Dampari. Let me head onto the phone lines and also on Zoom. Thankfully, Professor Chris Yening has joined us um, via Zoom. We also have former CID boss, um, C DCOP Bright Odru, joining us via phone. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time here on Top Story. I'll start with you, Professor Chris Yening, if you unmute. Really, what sense do do you get from listening to COP Alexander Menta before the committee today? Is it that of a man who is not ready to go down without a fight or a man who actually means well for the police service? Well, I think the abiding sense that one gets is that this is an individual who has converted the position of the Inspector General of Police thought that his party has come to power and by extension he should be or ought to have been promoted to the position of the Inspector General of Police. Furthermore, by alluding to mafia work almost a routine aspect of election security work and that his party would not be held and then broadening it to sow seeds of disaffection against the sitting IGP by claiming that personnel don't like him um is problematic, very problematic. But even more problematic is for such a senior officer who knows the complaint channels within the police service not to have used it and to have used political channels. And that demonstrates in no uncertain terms from where I sit that first, he doesn't mean well for the service. Mm. Secondly, he has translated his personal antagonism towards the system IGP and wants to go down with him and feeling that 
undermining the service that he has set up for so long. Well, so it's a very unfortunate. He raises a number of issues. I'll come back to you on issues about election organization, really, uh, in the country. Also, concerns about management of the police service under uh, Dr. George Kufudampari. He talks about mismanagement and the fact that many officers, as we speak, are disgruntled. And also, his involvement in politics is one of the things that I'll come back to you on, Professor. But let me bring you in, um, Lucio Piritad, um, Bright Odro. Grateful for your time here on Top Story. So, you have been a man in uniform and Listening to um, COP Alexander Mensah today before the committee, well, the concern about the management of um, the police under IGP Dampari. Are you surprised at the revelations that were made today? Uh, thank you. Um, I wouldn't say I'm surprised or I'm not surprised. But uh, here, you find an officer together with two others, um, having some conversation with uh, top political activists where I think they voiced out uh, their disappointment in the IGP. Uh, they might have touched on the fact that if uh, the IGP is not removed, uh, they were not going to, the party or his party was not going to break the eight. That is one aspect of the conversation that he had. Mm -hmm. I think they also talked about several other things bordering on and the IGP's management of the police service, which they said they were disappointed. That is how I see they were being disappointed. And that they would love that uh, investigation be instituted into how the IGP is managing the police affairs. We outside, I mean, those of us who have retired, who have had careers in the police service, uh, also have conversations with some of the police officers. And I think. Uh, some officers have expressed misgivings as well about how the IGP is conducting itself mm. uh, in terms of uh, managing the police service. So, uh, for me, uh, we shouldn't brush aside uh, or we shouldn't throw to the wind the accusations or allegations that have been made against uh, the, the, the IGP. There should be further proof. That is how I see it. There should be further proof because if it is, if we investigate and we find out that the IGP is doing what exactly is mandated to do, fine. If on the other hand we find out that he is not managing the police well, as the officer or the officers were saying, better then we find ways of uh, uh, rectifying whatever problems there are. But you have your ears and eyes on the ground, even though you are no longer in the service. Do you get the sense that there is a deep-seated level of mismanagement and people being disgruntled in the police force, knowing that this man is uh, retiring on the 16th of September? And his posturing, really, and the comment he makes raises a lot of concerns, doesn't it? I think I said earlier that I have spoken to some officers who also express the feelings about the way the service is being handled. I've spoken to some officers. And so I think that one has been answered already. Uh, yeah. For me, as I said, don't brush whatever allegations or accusations they are making against the IGP aside. Let's look into it. Officers are there. I think there are quite a number of senior officers who seem not to be happy. The way I see it, who also seem not to be happy with the way the matters are being handled in the police service. Could it also not be the case that people are just used to um, the, the ordinary way of doing things, for which reason they are not ready for change, which this IGP is bringing on board, for which reason we are seeing this kind of agitations and allegations of mismanagement against him? That is why I'm saying that let us look into whatever allegations they have leveled against him. Mm. Let us look into them and then we see, you know, police, we have several regulations. We have police service instructions we have CI 76. We have other statutes that guide the operational administration of the police service. And uh, if we look into the allegations that have been made, uh, we'll be in a position to find out whether uh, these statutes, these regulations are being followed. Mm. But listening to some of the things that are coming up at this point, uh, they are concerned about morale in the service. Does it have the tendency um, to, to drive down morale or even bring it up, depending on where you stand? What does it do to morale in the service? Um, if the officers feel that, uh, or if there is deep division in the, in, in the service, 
Mm. And uh, some officers feel that the, the, their concerns are not being met. If some other officers are fevered as against others, uh, of course, the morale will be down, especially for the officers who feel that uh, their concerns are not being met. And so, like I said, why would we look into these things? Because it's for the better of the police service and for the better of, of, of Ghana as a whole. If we say we should look into it, who should lead this? How do you how now, would you like it done? Now we have we have a committee from Parliament that is looking into the tip matter. A committee can be set up by the president. A committee can or an inquiry can be can be set up to look into the concerns that have been made. There are several officers that can be talked to. So if we have an inquiry, if we have a committee to sit and look into what is actually happening in the police. And I'm saying that we shouldn't bring these things aside. Because the officer, and, and, and the, Mr. Mensah, COP Mensah mentioned that these officers have wives, they have children, they have friends, they have mothers and all that. And uh, if, if, if they think that, uh, uh, or if these officers think that uh, they are not being handled well, of course, you know the ultimate. They, they will think that it is it is government that has brought this IDP who is not living up to expectations as they want. And so they, they, they may be inclined to, to vote in a certain direction. Okay. That, the, that was with officers, I think, one of the concerns that he raised as well. They may be compared, even though he didn't mention vote, but that is how I, I deduce from what he said. So we have one, we have children, we have that, that, that. And it's, it's, it's government that brought this man, this IGP. And then he's not living up to the expectations that he wants. And so let us vote. Let us vote in a certain direction so that uh, we'll have somebody who will give us the IGP reward. This COP right so, you, you can finish on that. Yeah, so um, as I was saying, it's better. It's, it's for our own good. Let's not brush anything under the carpet. Let's look into whatever allegations that they have brought up against them. We are looking into the aspect where they said breaking the eight, breaking the eight if we don't remove him. That is one aspect. What about the other things that they have said about him? One other thing that I heard was relationship between the police and, of course, the military. Mm -hmm. Would we want to look into that as well? Or is this somebody is making an allegation? Somebody wants to pursue a personal vendetta. And so we will not look into that. I don't think so. Okay. We are grateful uh, for your time. That's um, DCOP retired. Bright Audrey was a former CID boss uh, joining us on what he had today at the ad hoc committee sitting when Ale at COP Alexander um, uh, Mensah uh, appeared before the committee. On Zoom is also Professor Kwesiening. Well, so I was asking you about uh, the other issues that came up. I'm sure you've been hearing uh, from uh, COP, DCOP retired Bright Audrey also. So the key issue also is about the mismanagement of the police service under the IGP. You have your eyes and ears on the ground for uh, the COP, DCOP Bright or Drew, we shouldn't brush these issues under the carpet. But really, should we also be setting up committees based on hearsay and some of the things that has come up today? Look, we need to take this issue seriously. When Mr. Odrow says he's neither surprised nor not surprised, that is a very spurious way of beginning an argument and speaking to something so serious. That's number one. Number two, when people claim they have wives and children and mothers and brothers, the point is and so forth. You are a senior officer. You serve at least for 30 years. You know there's a police council. You know there's a police appointments and promotions advisory board. You know there's a police management board. And you don't take your concerns to them. And you take it to a politician because you think your political party might lose office because an officer is honest and is working hard. I've always made this point. On the day that Dr. Dan Pyro was appointed, he had enemies 50 foot long because he has a track record in the service. I train a lot of police officers on an annual basis. Do I hear criticisms of the IGP? Yes. Do I hear praise of him? Yes. So, fine. The relationship between the Ghana Police Service and the military, the Ghana Armed Forces, is not different from the relationship between the Ghana Police Service and immigration and customs. 
the occasional tense periods. So I'm very disappointed in uh, Mr. Odro. He knows from where he retired from that these tensions do exist, mm. that we have ways of resolving them peacefully, that internal frustrations also do come out in different ways, and that the service itself has structures and procedures and processes for listening and resolving, probably not 100% effective. Okay, so there are channels that these complaints ought to have been channeled through. Mm -hmm. So let's not belittle the efforts and the institutions that we have built. You, you disagree let's that it. we should look into some of the allegations that were made today or we should just brush it aside. For him, it shouldn't be brushed aside at least. We should take a I say they are spurious. When a man begins by answering a question that I am not surprised or surprised, mm -hmm. you can't trust what the man says. Because he doesn't have a standpoint and he's not willing to stick his neck out. Professor Christianing, we are grateful uh, for your time. He's a security analyst joining us via Zoom. We are grateful for your time also, uh, DCOP retired, Bright Hudro. And we'll, we'll get into more of the revelations that came up today at the ad hoc committee shortly on Newsnight. This is Top Story brought to you by Vodafone. Hey, you ever buy credits where you get up to 20%?